What is up, my people? We are back at it again. Um, it's a new year, and right, we want to start off the year, you know, on the right foot. Uh, but, but uh, I was sick, so that, that's why I was off for a little bit. I wasn't. Uh, I didn't immediately come back. I was gonna make a prediction video about Usyk versus. Versus Fury, and I might still do that today, but I wanted to, to take this time to to kind of um, talk a little bit about you know where this channel is going to be going in the future, and how I'm going to handle things, um, and a, kind of a little a little bit about myself so you understand where I'm coming from, and not you know get to. I, I just I just want you to know what to expect, you know, because in this you know, in these days, um, it's 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 kind of uh, polarizing out there. So in boxing and in in everything else in life, um, it is a uh, um, somewhat po polarizing, meaning that. Everybody wants to choose sides, and they want you to choose sides. And and when you don't, they call you disloyal or or not having a backbone, you know. And the reason I want to talk about this in particular was because in the boxing world, there seems to be loyalties between certain types of fans and some boxers, or uh, even worse, or even more alarming again, or between. Um, uh, some some fans and, and, and certain promotional companies um, like the PBC like you know Mayweather promotions you know the La Jolla promotion or Golden Boy promotions rather um, and, and and I never understood that you know it's 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 more more of a newer thing and I saw it more, I used to see it more in like when it comes to brands like Nikes or Adidas and stuff like that. And and that that never made sense to me uh, either because cause it's like these are just companies, you know, and their their primary job or their relationship to you is, you know, they, they're providing a product and you are consuming the product. You know, so in essence, what you are is to them is a consumer, and they make their money off of whether you like the product or if they produce a, a good product or not. And that's it. You know, there there's no um, connection to to your family. They don't represent your people or anything like that. That's just what it is. But some people they get very invested in this whole Nike versus Adidas thing. And I only wear Nikes, and you ain't never gonna see no Adidas on me and stuff like that. Now, now that used to be the case. I don't know if that still is the case. I think it's stupid. Uh, but even then, um, I, I could understand it because people wanted to be like Jordan. They wanted to be like, you know, these these uh, superstars that would only wear Nike or would only wear, uh, you know, whatever brand they were wearing. But the truth of the matter is that these people are getting paid to wear this this stuff. You know, they they were getting um, paid to only wear Nikes. Um, you know, but but the fact that in in boxing in particular, and I'm going to talk about martial arts too, because it, 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 there's loyalties in martial arts as well. But the loyalties are different, you know, and it's not as weird in the martial arts. Cause in the martial arts, it's it's like uh, in mixed martial arts and in the martial arts uh, world, it's like I'm loyal to this way of, of punching, you know, or I'm loyal to to Brazilian jiu-jitsu, and this is the only way to do things. Everything else sucks. Um, you know, the, these types of like almost cult like cult like mentalities are, you know, um running crazy in, in, in everywhere, especially in, I believe, in the U.S. mostly. Um, I can't really speak 
about other countries, but I think it's more of a U.S. Um, thing. Um, but the, the the reason I was making this video is because I was I just wanted to tell you guys I, I don't really, um, I don't really think that way. You know, um, I don't really compute that way. I don't I don't find loyalties that easily. I don't. I don't give my energy out that easy, you know, and, and the reason for that is because, I mean, I just don't, I just don't do that, you know, um, you're not gonna, you're not gonna catch me, you know, trying to, to defend something that I really don't, like, I, I, I will defend someone, you know, if I feel like he's being unjustly attacked, if I feel like I have proof that, that he's not, um, you know, having a, f a fair, you know, trial or being judged fairly or something like that. You know, I'll do that. Um, try to get to the bottom of, of, of things in, in certain situations is, is definitely, you know, definitely a thing to do. But does that mean that because I took a side at one point of time... Meaning because I defended, say, Canelo Alvarez. Does that mean that I'm always going to defend him? Does that mean that he's always going to be in the right? Um, no. Uh, now, I'm not going to go out of my way to find something um, that's wrong with him. You know, but he's a human being. And, and Mayweather is a human being. And all of these boxers are humans, you know. And they all have faults. And they're all, you know, flawed. So it's to be expected. The thing is when people idolize these people, you know, like Wilder and stuff like that. And they could do no wrong. And then when when they lose, you know, people start losing their their, their heads. They start losing their shit, you know, and and they start to to make up these conspiracy theories and they start to hate on all other boxers and you know, there's a lot of hate in the boxing community. And it, it's based off of race more than more than anything else. And they'll, they'll try to hide it and say, oh, it's, it's this, that, and the other. You know, but um, the other day I was watching an interview. Um, I think it was Hype TV or something like that. I forgot what it was. But they were interviewing these this uh, this coach, and he I, I've seen him before. I just forget his name. Uh, but they were talking they were talking to him about you know what he thought about the whole scuffle between Eddie, or not Eddie, um, 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 Bill Haney and and Bernard Hopkins. You know after the the Golden Boy event. Which uh, one of his fighters, I think it was Virgil Ortiz, was fighting in it. So Virgil Virgil Ortiz had a had a fight, which by the way, you know, it was one of these one of these fights that that had a lot of controversy in it because it ended in the first round. Um, everybody that went to go see it wasn't weren't really entertained, um, and and so yeah, people then afterwards they found out that the guy had like some some brain tumor or something or some brain hemorrhage and he he shouldn't even have been fighting you know and you could see in there that he wasn't he wasn't doing good that guy uh, but you know that's in my opinion that's number one on its on his team because that's the first line of defense is the team you know a lot of people want to blame oscar but you know oscar could never get away with stuff like that if his team was on his side but if your team ain't on your side and they're not on their, you know, P's and Q's, you know, taking care of you, watching you, you know, looking at you. You could see it in somebody's eyes and be like, it's so wrong with you. You know, you're not doing the same. Your lateral movement isn't that well, which means that you probably, you probably have some brain damage or something. Um, but if, if the first line of the defense, if the first line of defense ain't working, then then, you know, if Oscar gets away with making a fight like that, you know, I, I feel like the first line of defense was, was the his people. And the doctors, I mean, the doctors could 
be paid, bro. They could be paid. You know, all of these, there's nothing that is incorruptible in this world. You know, doctors, um, you know, the WADA and VADA thing, you know, how, oh, I'm, I'm with WADA, I'm with VADA. At the end of the day, bro, you could you could pay the, these people to to either find something controversial to taint somebody's reputation or, you know, turn a blind eye to, to things that are happening. And I, I don't know if I, I told you guys, but in the past, I, 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 I met a, a guy who used to be a boxer. Um, and, um, and he told me that, that most of the people in, in boxing, you know, are on something. You know, and I asked him, oh, they're, they're on steroids. And he was like, well, st steroids ain't, ain't always what they need, you know. So some people, if they're too nice and they're not aggressive enough, they're going to need something like steroids to to make them more aggressive, to um, give them more, uh, more of an edge, you know, in, in, in the fight. Now, some people, some people already have the strength. You know, so they need other things. They need like um, something that makes them faster. You know, and then I asked him about Mayweather, and he said that Mayweather. And now this is what he said. Okay, now I think that was he. He's the one that told me, or somebody else told me. But he said that Mayweather was using something that that made him that affected his neural his neural system. And that's why he had to retire when he retired because his body was breaking down because of it. And um, uh, and it's the same thing that I think his uh, his uncle was using as well. So I mean, and, and that that there could have been cap because it just sounded like it was cap. But at the same time, I, I did see his his uh, his uncle slow down really bad. And. Um, he just died. I May mean, he rest in peace. By the way, he was he was one of the great ones. Um, but you know, but like like I said, like these these loyalties that people have to to people, you know, to to flesh and bone humans, and this loyalty that people have to skin tone, you know, people just try to find things that they identify with and then and they say oh yeah yeah he's like me so i'm gonna support him you know um and um and i think and a lot of these people think they're christians and, and stuff like that but it's like they don't even read the bible like you know what it says i think it says cursed be the man who puts his faith on on strength of flesh so that's talking about them bro Cursed be the man who puts his faith on strength of faith and not on on God. So these people are putting their faith in the fact that they're black or that they're Mexican or whatever. And, and I mean, I, I'm saying it's cool to be proud of, of your people. But then when you go out of your way and start to insult other people and um, and thinking that you don't really have to work that hard. You know, you really don't have to um, do anything because you you were born, you know, better than other people. Like, no, you, know, you have to put in the hard work. You have to, you have to, you know, keep your hands up just like everybody else or, or keep your guard up, you know, depending on, on what you do. But so. So, yeah, like. That's what I wanted to say today. It's like that's where I'm coming from. I'm coming from, from, from a place like from a middle way. You know, that's that's what I like to call it. I like to call it the, the middle way, uh, because it, it's something that I, I kind of came up with. Because it, it came it came to me like you know sometimes stuff comes to you, and, and it is not really meant in that way but you see it in that way so a, a quick story i was well, one time i was uh, uh it was a long time ago driving with my dad and he was trying to teach me how to drive and, and he told me you know when there's open roads like this 
and there's cars coming from the other direction and, and cars coming from this direction if there's an empty if there's an empty road or you have a chance to take the middle of the road you know take the middle of the road and and I asked him why and he said if you take the middle of the road you'll be able to see both sides equally and there's so much space space in the road that um, you'll have you'll have time to to adjust accordingly you know so if something comes from the right and you're closer to the right it's gonna be harder for you to to move out of the way but if you take it the left the same thing happens right if something comes from the right you'll be able to move out of the way or stop or whatever um, but if you take the middle if you take the middle of the road you'll be able to see both sides clearly and if something comes from the left or the right you know you'll be able to adjust accordingly and I remember listening to this and thinking you know that's kind of like life you know that's kind of like like the way you know and this was a long time ago um, this is back when I was first starting to drive and and I remember listening to that and thinking you know that's that's a lot like life you know you gotta you gotta first of all worry about the people in your car the people that are with you in the moment you can't be worried about people in other cars or or stuff like that you should respect other people you know you should respect um the fact that there's other people around you but the number one thing is to take care of the people in your car and take care of, the, of yourself and take care of, of your vehicle and and what you got to do is you got to take that middle way and judge things as they come you know accordingly you know and and a lot of people aren't aren't able to do that because they they um they find loyalties and things that that aren't necessarily loyal to them at all they have nothing to do with them you know the other day um, some guy um, called in, in in a boxing show. I think it was a boxing podcast. It's called um, The Boxing Voice. And um, and he said, so so what do you think about Better Beef? And is it Better Beef or uh, Better Beef? I think it's Better Beef. Uh, it's not Better Beef. So... Yeah, he said, so what do you think about Beterbiev, you know, and, and stuff like that. And then he said, he said, I don't know, uh, Ness, I, I see something in a man that that takes a knee after he wins a fight. And, and I was like, what? The, what is he talking about? Like, So he he's he's like, he said, I think he's he's strong and he's not going to be beaten because he took a knee after a fight. And he, he got on his knees after a fight. I was like, man, that that sounds. First of all, pause. You know, was like, I see something in the man that takes it, uh, that gets on his knees after a fight, bro. Like, what are you talking about? And um, and but then then I started analyzing it. Like, what did that what did that guy mean? Because it, it got it got weird. Because I was like, I don't know what that guy's talking about. Like, he thinks that he's judging everything off of this man just taking a knee after a fight. What does that even mean, bro? And then I realized, okay, this guy's a black Muslim. And and he likes the fact that Baturbiev is a Muslim himself too. So now he's now some people see I they identify with they just try to look for something to identify with, bro. To be like, oh, that guy's like me, you know. So if he's like me, if he wins, I win. And I, I get it, bro. But it's just sometimes it gets corny as hell, dude. It just gets like extremely corny, you know, and. And it's like, bro, y'all need to just relax and enjoy boxing, bro. Just enjoy boxing. Just stop, stop trying to look for things to, to be like, oh, this guy is like me, you know. Like, there's like an identity crisis in, 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 uh, in the U.S. right now, bro. And, um, and yeah, that's what it was. He's like, oh, he's Muslim like me, so that means. If he wins, I win or something like that. I don't know what the hell's going on in these guys' heads, bro. But it's like... It's weird, bro. It's weird. Um, 
but my cat's over here looking for me, but I'm like hiding in my car. Anyways, um, but yeah, that was another one of those things where people be trying to find, you know, and, and I get it. Like, like I used to like Barrera, you know, Barrera, Barrera is one of my favorite fighters ever. I know he's not the best. I know that, and that's the thing about it too. Like, if you like somebody, like if you like a boxer for whatever reason, you like his style or whatever, it doesn't mean that the guy's perfect. You, you're not going to... You're not going to go and say, oh, he's the best in the world. He's the fastest. He's the sexiest. He's like, for example, the Terrence Crawford fans, you know, over there, you know, yeah, he's good, bro. I get it. But it's like, I can't even compliment him the right way for some of y'all because y'all want me to just <laughs> slob on his knob or something, bro. It's like, like, what do you want, bro? I, I'm saying he's he's one of the best right now. I'm saying he beat the shit out of Terrence Crawford. And and some of y'all still like when you make your 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 um yearly, you know, who's the best of the year or whatever. They wanted him to get best fighter of the year. They wanted him to get best fight of the year. And they wanted him to get everything, bro. It's like like relax, bro. Like he's not everything, dude. He's not. You know, and, and I be telling him, like he's a good boxer and everything. He just he does get hit a lot. I tell him, but they don't they don't believe me. They're like, nah, you don't even get hit a lot. So what? It's like he's another Mayweather, I guess. But he's not. He's not even this style ain't even the same as Mayweather. Um, but I don't know, bro. It's like um, some people just they they just. I don't know. They just get in this this mode where. But anyways, I used to like Barrera, but like I said, I knew he wasn't the fastest. I knew he wasn't um, the strongest or anything like that. But I think I liked him maybe because of that. You know, maybe that was the the reason that I that I um, that I liked him so much because he wasn't the best. He wasn't the strongest, but he found a way to win a lot of these fights. You know, he found a way to to beat people that were considered better than him. You know, um, and even against Pacquiao, you know, against Pacquiao, he the second fight, you know, I thought he did very well. You know, I thought he did very well, but I knew they weren't going to give it to him. Um, so it is what it is, bro. Sometimes um, you win, sometimes you don't. But at the same time, did I did I ever say, you know, um did I ever say that he was, you know, like this? <laughs> even they even want to get like the sexiest man alive. It's like, bro, I need to relax, bro. I need to relax. Um, but yeah, and people need to like. The other thing is, the other thing I, li I like to look out for is is like sales pitches. You know, I talked about it in the other video as well. Um, I talked about the sales pitches that these um, fighters. Um, like repeat so that people could buy their fights like one of them is um, like for example Shakur Stevenson you know saying that that's real boxing and then boxing is hit and not get hit like he's repeating these little uh, like talking points little short sweet talking points that people know and consider to be the truth which they are but he's using them to excuse the fact that he gave us gave us a, a shit fight, you know, and and that that's what I'm talking about. Like it's like, like for example, um, um, the the whole overhyping of, of the the O, oh, the zero, the fact that you're undefeated. It's not that important, you know. That's it's an overhypification of it, you know. Um, the Another one of these crazy, like, um, um, like, uh, sales pitches is, is the whole, um, um, I'm not PC. And this one's outside of boxing. Um, uh, but in boxing, it's, it's a little bit more frowned upon for some reason, but outside of boxing, man, it's like, it's like the main thing people like, you know, but they only like it from certain types of people. Like, that's the thing, bro. It's like. Everything is upside down here in the U.S. 
and it's like I don't even know what what, what what to think anymore. Like one of the biggest cons or the biggest sales pitches is, uh, especially here in the U.S. Well, around the world, especially the Western world, is to say that you're not PC or that you're edgy or or that you um, that you um, how can I say this? Yeah, that that you got that you tried that somebody tried to cancel you. You know, it's it's is used. It's one of these things that it's used to excuse themselves from judgment, like from the law. Um, it's this thing that is is used to to gather the masses. You know, um, and people keep falling for it, especially like in the comedy world. You see these guys pretending to be edgy, and then they're trying to be canceled. And it may have been just one guy. Or maybe a couple of, of people just complained about something, and and he's like, "Oh, you just you just hating because they're trying to cancel me, guys. Support me, you know." And then they, <laughs> and everybody falls for it, dude. And I'm like, "Dude, like, come on, dude." Now I'm not saying that, like, for example, Chappelle, he left for real, and I don't know uh, something happened to where he actually did get canceled by a company. All right, so so that was real. You know, after that, you know, he got into it with a bunch of trans people. And I'm like, like, he didn't have to do all that. You know, and now it's like every time I watch him, he's just complaining about trans people. And that's not funny no more. It's like I came to watch a show and came to watch jokes. You know, his Netflix specials has been just him complaining about trans people. And that's not entertaining no more. That's you. That's your beef between you and them. I don't care about that. You know what I mean? I, I, I'm here to laugh, not to talk about, you know, how you got into it with some, some trans lady. Um, but the thing is, Chappelle, he knows that people are into that right now. People are into this whole, like, oh, anti-woke thing. Like, that's one of the biggest cons, dude. Ricky Gervais, I don't know if you guys, I'm, I'm, I know I'm getting out of boxing for a little bit, but Ricky Gervais... He's a funny dude, right? Um, and I used to I used to like him a lot because he was controversial. He said a lot of, but at the same time, he was funny. That's the thing. You gotta be funny. You you can't just be, you know. Like now, it's like to to the point to where all these comedians are trying to all be edgy, and now it's not even it's not even funny anymore, dude. It's like y'all can't all be the same thing, dude. Y'all can't all be racing to offend somebody because now it's just like. Bro, like it's not it's not even original anymore. The the last uh, special that I saw from Ricky Gervais, he just took an hour just looking at his phone, looking through text, and him talking trash to people. It's like, come on, dude. Like you, that sh that should be above you, dude. That should be above you because you're you're rich, you're successful. Make jokes, bro. That, that's the laziest thing for, in my opinion, for a comedian to do is to just look at, you know, people and start, like, attacking them. You know, especially people that are already going through it, like the trans community. Like, they're being used by by politicians to, to push certain things. You know, because if you ask them, they don't care about Bud Light. You know, they don't even care about boxing. But for some reason, they're being pushed into these areas because it's 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 a move, bro. I'm telling you, like the whole transgender thing and uh, trying to get into boxing. You know, who's the number one demographic of, of or consumer of of women's boxing? It's not females, and it's not transgender females or or whatever. It's males. It's men. Men are the number one consumers of boxing in general, both female and male boxing. You know, so them attacking that is, in my opinion, it's kind of like a um, an attempt to to poke at the bear and to cause, you know, some kind of reaction. You know, that's why they're attacking these these things. Um, that trans trans uh, people don't really care about. Um, I think trans people mostly care about entertainment. 
they care about like music and stuff like that. So get into that, bro. And I'm telling you, there's not gonna be that much problem with that because y'all been in that anyways. Um, but I'm not saying don't box or anything like that. But it's just weird to me. It just it just seems like a ploy to to do like a, you know some kind of a, what what do they call it coup d'état or something like that. I may, I may be quoting that one, but but anyways. Um, but yeah, that's, that's one of the biggest, biggest, like, like cons right now. All the comedians are doing it. All the politicians are doing it and they're trying to get people on their side with that same move. Like, come on, bro. That, if that shit's still working on y'all, bro, that's crazy to me, bro. They, I don't see it. Like all I have to do right now is insult somebody that's a minority. Mexicans are bringing drugs and they're rapists. Boom. He said the quiet thing out loud. He's so um controversial. He had he's speaking truth to power. What power, bro? These people are they have no power. What are you talking about? You're literally punching down and and people are are praising here in the US especially in, in the Western world praising you for it. Um And, um, and these, these are the kind of things that that people um, think that I should be on the other side of. You know, me being, you know, Christian. Immediately, if, if they hear me say, oh, I'm Christian, I believe in Jesus Christ. And I would like to follow in his footsteps. Even though I'm not, you know, the best at it. You know, um, they think that because of that, I should hate the transgender community. I should hate um, immigrants. I should hate these things. And it's like, when when did Christianity become synonymous with hate? You know what I mean? When did that happen? When did when did it turn into the a requirement to be a Christian meant that you have to be this bitter old man in a rocking chair looking at people pass by and saying, eh, get out of my country, you. You know, like, things need to be left the way they were. Thousand years. It's like, bro, like, nothing stays the same ever, dude. Everything changes. It goes through cycles. If you look at the way the world works, you know, everything starts and everything dies and everything comes back the thing is humans we're so obsessed with things staying the same you know we try to make these buildings that don't the elements don't touch for a long time how can we make it to where this is resistant and lasts for so long um but at the end of the day everything bro everything will be destroyed everything will go to dust and everything will be taken over by green and dirt um, and there's nothing you can do about it. There is nothing you can do about it. You know? And Jesus talked about that too. He said, he said, look at the birds in the sky. You know, they don't do nothing, but they, they get food. You know? Um, um, yeah, look at the leaves. Look at look at the flowers. Look at how they're they're designed and and um, they don't have to worry about clothes, you know. And then he said, no matter how much you worry, you know about the day what's going to come tomorrow, you can't add a day to your life. You know, meaning that you know you're you're over worrying about these things. You know, trying to keep these things, hold these things the way they are. You know, and at the end of the day, it's all going to be gone like the wind. Um, so then what should you worry about, I guess, is the question. And I mean, <laughs> there you go. But... 
Yeah, man, it's like, like, they, people miss what Jesus was about. Jesus wasn't about hate. You know, I, I can't remember if Jesus ever talked about gay people or, or, or trans people or anything like that. Because it was a different time. So, there are certain lessons that we can take from Jesus, but there are certain lessons that we cannot take from Jesus. Because there are certain things that he, he never encountered. You know? So then why why are we basing everything we do around our particular morals and our particular religion? Like, I'm a Christian, but I'm not going to judge you if you're not. If you're a Muslim or if you're a Hindu or if you're a, um, what is the other one? The, the, the Buddhist. You know, I'm not going to judge you if you do that. That's the thing about America. America is about freedom of religion. And to be honest, I don't want everyone to be Christian. You know, I think that would be boring. And even even Jesus Christ himself said, you know, many are called, but few are chosen. You know, this path is hard to follow. And it is. It's one of the hardest paths to follow is, is the path of Jesus. You know, love your enemies. What <laughs> Is the hardest thing in the world to do. You know, some people don't even love their neighbors. <laughs> some people don't even love people in their own family, let alone their enemies. You know, forgive those who offend you <laughs> here in America. <laughs> and there's the thing here in America, people think that we're a Christian country. We're Judeo Christian. It's like, bro, no, we're not. We're far from that. We're a warring country. Everything about our culture is warring. You know, like from the sports we play to to the way we think about life and what what, what the pursuit of happiness should be for us. Um, you know, everything is about take, 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 take. You know, take American football, for example. It's literally like a war on a... <laughs> it's a war on a field, bro. It's like we're taking up space. This is our land now. Move back. This is our land now. This is ours. And then we start all over again. This is ours. This is ours. This is our land. Our board games, Monopoly. This is mine. This is mine. This is mine. This is mine. And we, we laugh at people crying, bro. We laugh. <laughs> we laugh at people crying because they're losing everything. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh at it, bro. It's it, bro. It's crazy that the culture that we 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 grew up on here in the U.S. is it's something else, dude. Um, and that's why it's so hard for people to see the middle way, because everything has to be either left or right, cops or robbers, cowboys or Indians, black or white. You know. That's just the, the mentality we have. Um, but anyways, I think I I, I, uh, I probably said a lot there. It's going to be it for today, guys. I was going to show you some of these drawings that I made, so I'm going to keep flipping through them. But if you like this video, please like, comment, and subscribe. And I will catch you guys later.